Welcome back to Random Gleanings. I am Chris. He is Jesse. So we're going to talk about donor advised funds today, Jesse, and charitable giving still. This is really for anyone under the age of 70 and a half. So pay attention because a lot of folks don't realize the tax code changed about five years ago in terms of how deductions work, right? That's right. That's right. And let me just make a side note. If you're above 70 and a half, this is available to you, but it, go back and watch our uh, qualified last charitable video. distribution video last, uh, last week, week uh, where there might be some more advantage to you there. So, Okay. So let's just start with giving year by year, right? Like we all are used to giving to church, giving to charity, et cetera, and just writing it out of the checkbook. But here's how the math works. Do you want to walk us through it? Yeah. So, you know, I think this is, you know, not too far off of uh, a lot of folks. They'll they'll give some combination to or to some combination of church and charity, maybe upwards of five thousand dollars a year. They've got some mortgage interest. We've got that, you know, uh, noted at five thousand dollars a year. And then perhaps their state and local taxes are deductible now, capped at ten thousand dollars. So we've represented that. That's right. Uh, and They've been capped since twenty eight. Well, late twenty seventeen, tax year twenty eighteen. That's right. right. And and so. You know, I think what's lost on a lot of people, which is what your point is here, is that you're given, you're given, you're given, and yet there's no added benefit to uh, having given from a tax perspective. The point you have made before is you're you're being benevolent, but you're not getting any tax benefit That's for right. it. And and so in this example, if someone's given five and their mortgage interest and their salt deduction, state and local tax, which is capped at ten, and you can get there quick, right? Your mm-hmm. house your cars, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that'll get you in your state taxes. That'll get you to 10, yep. uh, above 10. So you're at 20, you're at 20 on itemized deductions. And now your standard de- deduction for 23 is $27,700. So you're not going to itemize, you're going to take the standard, which means you got nothing for those yellow ones up there, the charitable deductions. Yep. You would have gotten that deduction anyway. That's right. Let's look at option two, bunch giving. In other words, putting all your gifts in one year, but you wouldn't want to give to a charity all in one year, right? I think that's where this is lost on people is that, whoa, 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 giving $35,000 in a year? What what are you talking about? So walk us through you know, kind of what, what we're doing here. Okay. So we're going to talk Talk about a donor advised fund in a second, but the idea and the, the the nugget is you don't have to give it all in one year. You can give it to the charitable entity, the donor advised fund, but you don't have to give all the money to the charity in one year. But you can take the deduction in one year. So in this scenario, what we have is someone who's um, gifted thirty five thousand dollars, and we'll explain why in a second. It's thirty five. Um, and plus their mortgage interest, plus their deductions. Now they're itemizing. They're above twenty seven seven hundred. They're at fifty thousand four hundred. They're going to itemize in that case. Oh, yeah, but next year they're not going to itemize. They're going to be back in that standard deduction camp, which means now their total two year deduction is upwards of almost eighty grand, which is about twenty three thousand dollars better than what it was doing it the other way. That's right. So so what if I don't want to give away thirty five thousand four hundred dollars in one? One year. Tell me what I need to do. So you, again, you use a donor advised fund. So on this graphic that we have on the screen here, you create it, then you put money in it and you're going to get a benefit from that. You're going to need to work with your tax advisor on that. We'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, but the money stays in there. You don't have to give it to charity in the year that you put the money in. In fact, next graphic, here's an example um, compared between opening, starting a private foundation, which has substantial cost, uh, versus a donor advised fund, which has virtually no cost. And basically, you get better tax deductions uh, for the donor advised fund than you do for at least limits than you do for a a, a foundation. So um, neither are you required to give money out in any given year. So you can fund this donor advised fund with maybe expectations of continuing your $5,000 annual gifting, uh, uh, but you aren't required to in any given year. That's right. Okay, so next graphic, a, a an example. Here's a 52-year-old couple. They're making 220000 a year. They're both maxing their 401k plans. They've got adjusted gross income of $160,000, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. 
So back in 2018, they bought some Apple stock when it traded at 50 bucks a share, right? Goodbye. Today, yeah, what's that? Goodbye. Goodbye, that's right. <laughs> and, and so they paid 10 grand. And today it's trading at 177, which means they've got a value of $35,400. That's an appreciated security, right? Mm -hmm. And they've held it for the long term. You have to, in order to, to, to fund in this way, it has to be a, a long term uh, gain. So basically, they've got a gain of nearly $26,000. So why don't you walk us through if they sell stock? All right. So if this couple, um, you know, has their 160 AGI, they've got a capital gains of 25,400. They've got a total income, from Apple. right from the Apple stock. Okay. They've got a total income of $185,000 less that standard deduction, bringing their taxable income to 157,700. Uh, that you know, even with the long-term capital gains on the on the Apple stock, brings their total federal tax estimated. Uh, I want to caution myself here on my math, but twenty three thousand five hundred thirty one dollars, an effective tax rate of nearly fifteen percent. Right. Okay. So if we give it to the donor advised fund instead, same scenario. We've got $160,000 of income. We've got an itemized deduction, again, going back, you know, to my example a second ago of gift bunching. We've got an itemized deduction of $50,400. So now our couple here has taxable income of $109,600. It's paying $14,727 in tax, which is savings of $8,800 in taxes. I mean, that's real money. That's real money. Paid that, to Uncle Sam. That's right. And, and let's just – one more step. If – I was inclined because I didn't need the money that, that the Apple stock had accumulated to, and I was inclined to give that money away one way or the other. Um, in the difference here, next slide, is the results of donating the, the stock directly, okay, versus selling it first, is the charity benefits more by $3,800. Uh, you've paid less in taxes by $8,800. You've got a total benefit increase of north of $12,600. So let me, l let me sort of clarify one thing here. The, the charity in this case is the donor advised that's fund. That's right. That's right. You are putting money in the donor advised fund. For the next however long it takes you to empty that thing, you're you're going to be giving grants or recommending grants from the donor advised fund outward. It's I, it's listed here as a charity because once it's given, there is no recourse to get those dollars back. That's right. That's what gives you the tax deduction all in one year. But to your point, you have the opportunity to gift that out over the long, length of time that the money stays in there. It's kind of like taking money from your left pocket and putting it in your right pocket right now. Or, or, you know, you got your checkbook in one pocket. In the other pocket, you've got this donor advised fund that you're going to make your charitable gifts out of going forward. Now, keep in mind, before you were making it out of the checkbook, so you may be thinking to yourself, "Well, I'm giving this money away, and I don't. I, I mean, I don't. I mean, I, I do need that money, right?" Well, you were still given whatever you were given the charity. That's right. Now you're just not giving it out of the checkbook. That's right. You're giving it out of your donor advised fund, like your second you know, account uh, that yeah, you fund. That's out right. That's right. Okay. So next graphic again, our, our donor here, uh, we've circled number five, which is when ready recommend grants to your donor advised fund to eligible charities. So as long as it's 501c3, you're going to be fine uh, in terms of your, your, your charitable grant recommendations. So the way a donor advised fund works is there's a board like Fidelity has one Vanguard Schwab, Raymond James, whomever they, mm -hmm. they, uh, they're Community a lot foundation. Correct. You know, there, there are a lot of them out there. Okay. There is a board that oversees those recommendations. It has to be arm's length in that way. Um, there's some details there. It's important to know. We're happy to share with you so that you, you have a good feel for it. But the gist is you're recommending to that board of directors of the donor advised fund where your, where your gifts go. It works great over time. Yeah. I, I, again, I think uh, getting into the details is more for those that are interested. Just uh, understand this is about a tax savings strategy uh, initially yes. here, and, and we can explain the details to you more personally. Yeah. And, and next graphic, I mean, once the money's in the donor advised fund, uh, keep in mind, if you're given, you know, like our example, 5K to charity anyway, it's going to take seven years for you to donate all that money in that 
in that donor advised fund, which means you're just going to take the standard deduction for the next six years beyond. Which should presumably uh, benefit you from a tax standpoint. That's right. And during that time period, you're also not going to be writing that check out of the checkbook, which means then you can put that money in your investment account That's right. and go buy more Apple or, or, or whatever, or whatever you want to right. at yep. that point. Okay. Again, next next slide. Just a, a little bit of detail. It's important to talk to your tax advisor because there are some limitations in terms of how much you can fund in a given year. It's You're limited when you give long-term appreciated securities 30% of your adjusted gross. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you get right down to it, um, you know, it, it makes sense. You just got to be in a certain situation. Yeah, I, you know, it's just very regularly people are asking, how can I save more on taxes? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you, yeah, this is an example of how and, to do it. And not it's, everybody has appreciated stock or, or maybe, you know, they may not be charitably inclined. So there are limitations in the tax code that, that you can't just save taxes just because you want to. Right. So what we're trying to, to point out here before year end is, hey, maybe you find yourself in this situation. And if you do, um, charitably inclined, looking for a tax break, talk to us. We can help highlight whether or not that's available. Yeah. You. If you're a human being, U.S. citizen, that has an income that has some appreciated securities that are longer than 12 <laughs> months held i mean yes it makes sense yeah you're right yeah okay moving on moving earnings on. season Eco- uh, economies and market uh, yeah it's earnings season so i pulled some um headlines just not to to go into any of them in particular but it is we are in the uh the the hot season of earnings season for q3 uh this week and so Tonight, as a matter of fact, we're recording on uh, October 18th. We'll hear from Netflix and Tesla. Yep. Those will be exciting, I, I presume. Uh, but but uh, lots of lots of earnings calls going on right now. Yeah, and, and so far, just taking a look at what's happening from an earnings season standpoint. I mean, only nine percent of the S and P has reported so far through the last, I guess, seven days of earnings season. And what you'll find is that. The, the S&P as a whole, 81% of the companies that have reported so far have beaten earnings by um, 8%. And in fact, I mean, like, look at consumer discretionary, right? I mean, 13% of companies reported. I mean, granted, it's only 7 out of 52. Amazon hasn't reported yet. But, I mean, 86% of those companies have beaten earnings so far. Uh, by a surprise of twelve and a half. Look at financials; ninety-one percent have beaten with a with by thirteen percent surprise. Mm-hmm. Um, those are big numbers. Now, I'm not They're, saying you know that's not everybody. Yet. Yeah, that's right. We, I'll just say on the financials. I looked again; only eleven uh, companies have reported. There was a couple, I think, yesterday, and and predominantly some big banks. And so you kind of were expecting those guys to look all right. But I've looked down the, the spectrum a little bit, and some of the regionals are hanging in there themselves. Yeah. So it's not been it has not been a bad uh, start to earnings season. So I mean, here's the thing, though, to me, right? I mean, you've had six or seven quarters. Like, if your job is to manage the finances, or you know cost of goods sold um i mean you kind of got the memo <laughs> you should have anyway yeah. yeah you should have and i think that that uh again i think companies are typically better managed there's more data available there's more data uh, that they're tracking and have been trained to track and so i do think that yes i think generally they ha- are, are better prepared coming into this if you look at um new orders from companies versus uh, inventories for manufacturing companies specifically. Um, I mean, they've been positive now for like four months, more new orders than inventories. So, I mean, that's a good thing. It is. Uh, Next slide, um, you know, Fidelity Global Macro Head, uh, Urian Timmer notes that, hey, Things do look good, I think, right? Uh, but now the the heavy lifting for stocks to continue will be on these projections of the next two years of 12% earnings growth. Um, you know, that will be what will determine, you know, what comes next, ultimately. And and yet, so far through earnings, again, light load so far, 9%. But um, they aren't revising those forecasts down. They haven't yet. So Yeah, so. yeah. All right. Next topic. Uh, our our friend Bernie here is pointing out that inflation still exists, and uh, 
and uh, he hopes that inflation will stop inflating soon. I'm not, so, I don't agree with uh, Bernie on a lot, but I <laughs> yeah yeah I will I, second that yeah, emotion. Me, me too. And <laughs> and finally, this is a chart of the median consumer price index, which I know we've talked about plenty. But no matter your measure of inflation, everything pre 2021 is below that blue line at three percent. And everything since then has kind of uh, been above it, and we're still not below it. Yeah. And and so no matter your preferred measure, we're not done yet. Yeah. It's not all all green light. So, um, you know, more to come. That's right. Yeah, so uh, have you got any recommendations this week? Yeah, so Heath, my wife, and I are watching the supermodels on um, – Apple TV Plus. It must so, be mean, real rough for you. Yeah, it is rough. <laughs> Naomi Campbell, Cindy Crawford, Linda Evangelista, Christy Turlington. And I mean, these ladies, you know, you, you go back and see some of these ads. It's amazing because you're like, oh, my God, I do. Re-, you know, I remember that. Sure. But uh, yeah. Yeah, they're not bad to look at, you know, episode after episode. How about you? Uh, so, you know, we've been watching some things. We watched Big Vape, uh, which has been interesting. Uh, we watched a, a documentary about um, the uh, Price is Right. I, I went and saw that in the studio one one time, and so that was Bob. the interest. I wouldn't recommend necessarily either of those. I, what I do want to recommend is I went out this past weekend and played disc golf. You're a big golfer. Uh, disc golf, man, this time of year, Greenville, South Carolina, can't beat just being outside and uh, walking in a beautiful space. And so I'm not so good at swinging a club, but I can throw a, I can throw a Frisbee. Yeah, so, yeah that's fun. awesome. Good for you. Hey, thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And if, if some tax saving strategies may help you or a friend pass it along, look back at a couple of our past episodes for some other planning ideas for year end and uh, see us again next week. Take care.